its time. It's time. And now, it's time for Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you for joining us. We are so happy. We are? That you joined us. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why would yeah. you say we are? Well, I didn't know we were, but we are. That <laughs> I, you didn't finish your sentence, you know. Now she finished your sentence. <laughs> oh, Absolutely. 50, we are both happy. 53 years with me and she still hasn't figured me out. No. And I'm not going to say anything about that because we're going to talk to a very excited oh, this, lady today. This lady, I, actually she has parts of people all over the United States. <laughs> and we'll explain what that means. Yes. Share her testimony She's right written there. a book, A Heart Like Yours. We have Cindy Valenti Cinto with us. Ooh. I think I did that right. She, but she's shaking her head. I think you're part right. <laughs> she lives with <laughs> multiple life-threatening health issues. After her heart transplant in 2005, she was given approximately five years to live, but she triumphantly You know why she was passed. given only five years? No, are we? She has diabetes. Passed that mark in July of 2010. Any, uh -huh. any other news No, I'm okay, as you're reading. She also had a successful pancreas transplant, and I, after a heart transplant. Yeah. And, and you got to hear this woman's story. She's amazing. And she says her husband John is bald. <laughs> Whatever. That so I told to her John can get a hair transplant. <laughs> All right. So we we'll just we we'll just keep going with transplants. Okay. I don't know where this you is going. You can't have any today. of mine. Okay. I'm not giving any away. Great under, to see under, you I here. I understand. That's the part of your body mm -hmm. that you can't take hair follicles from somebody else. And put them in another guy's head. Oh, I didn't it's know that. It's got to be your that. own follicle. There's yeah. so many things you can donate. I know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean they can actually donate a little tissue behind your eye, and and implant it in someone's ears who's deaf wow. and give them their hearing. I don't know back. why I'm standing. I have wow. a chair. Well, well, but yeah. because you because we're we're, we're ready to spar yeah. here. <laughs> okay. It's the humor. It's good, uh, it's good you to know. have you. It really is. <laughs> in fact, her book comes in CDs. First yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, and I, I I was listening to it by that's your card falling out of there. I was listening to her, see, but you're not reading it. I did. did you that really? was difficult. This is your voice? Take five, take seven, take This is your 12. voice on here? Yes, that's okay. me. Well, I didn't recognize In that. a little tiny booth, trying to, reading your book is just as hard as writing it. Oh, mm -hmm. I would imagine. I would imagine. You didn't have yeah. to come up with the idea, but I have a bit of a New York accent still, mm -hmm. and I live in Washington, so I had a hard time with some of those words. <laughs> Let's go to urgent care. Oh, no, let's not. <laughs> if I walk in, they're all going to run. Are you kidding? <laughs> okay, let's take a trip to urgent care right now. It's, 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 she's, I collapsed against the counter. I think I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> Does those words sound familiar? Uh, yeah. How did that feel? How did, the, how did you know? Oh, you know, it, it's, a heart attack is actually so different for many people. For me, it would be the elephant on the chest. Okay. But then it was like someone had reached up and was choking me. It didn't usually go down my arms. It was Could you just breathe? No, it was so hard to breathe. I, I really felt like I was being strangled. And that's mm -hmm. how, I mean, I had about 25 the first three or four years. Okay, take us, uh, by the way, you, I love those colors. <gasps> Thank you. I Did you know your fingernails tropical. are actually the same color as your outfit? Do you know that? I tried to do that. Okay, wow. Wasn't you pulled that it lovely? Off. You pulled it off. My 22-year-old just shook his head. <laughs> he doesn't get it. Okay, take us to your transplant. The very day? Well, the transplant... May, maybe a little leading up uh, yeah. to it because it's, it's, it's like... Uh, you, you, you excuse me. Yes, honey? I want to go back even further because she <laughs> said you had 25 heart attacks? About that in three years. In three years? It started uh, a week after the attack on 9-11. Now, I'm from New York. And I was getting ready to bring my son, he was 12 at the time, to uh, the fair out in Spokane, Washington. I live out in the Green Acres is the name of yeah, my town. Sure. Isn't that cute? Yeah. Spokane, and Washington. Spokane, Washington. I love Leavenworth, Washington. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yes. Oh, in the, in the winter, an, in the that, summer, every okay, day. That's another interview. Back, back to the okay. story. So I, uh, I was getting ready and I saw that whole thing on TV and oh, I just stopped and cried hysterical. I'd been in those towers, so I knew how many people were mm -hmm. probably in there at 9 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And a week later, I had my own attack, a heart attack. 
but it took three days for them to realize I was thin, thinner than now, healthy, athletic, vegetarian, organic. We had gone on a wilderness canoe trip with 20 people, and I was eating papaya slices and cheese, and they were eating hoagies and you know chips. Yeah. And low cholesterol, Honey, no I family stop history. Being a vegetarian, right? Low <laughs> cholesterol. Everybody says I should have eaten preservatives yeah, all my yeah, life. I yeah. would have been better off. You should off. have been eating at McDonald's. Yeah, Burger King, yeah, you right. know. And uh, I, I had not one reason to have any heart disease. Now I had been a diabetic since ten, but when I went and got life insurance, they said you're healthier than people without diabetes. There was no, mm -hmm. nothing. I was like pillar of health. And so about. What, about a week after the attack on 9-11, I started getting that tightness and like someone was choking me and I was doing a power walk by the stream one day and collapsed, made it home. And eventually I went to the doctor, but it took them three days to believe me. All the tests were normal, the EKG, yeah. the Good. nuclear... No, no blockage? Well, they couldn't find any blockage Goodness. until I ended up in the ER. I couldn't breathe anymore. And they finally did a heart catheterization, and I had the Widowmaker. Wow. Both the main artery and the side artery were 98% blocked. That's what that term means, isn't yeah. it? Widowmaker, it kills men, yeah. not women. Women don't usually get that. Yeah. Yeah. And yet here I was, no prior symptoms at all. Goodness. You just don't know. And I was 40 years old. Oh, my goodness. And there's a debate around the country. I've been to Seattle, San Diego, New York, Phoenix, hospitals everywhere. Mm -hmm. I even got an opinion from President Bush's private physician, Dr. Zachariah Zachariah. And he said, at, at the point I was, he said, there's nothing anybody can do anymore. That was after three years of so 25 you, So heart the heart attacks. was pretty well destroyed. It, it was over three years. I had 36 angioplasties in three years. Oh 36. my goodness. 36. I just had number 38 two weeks ago. Cindy. <laughs> so you're still having them even with your new Every heart? Every year because they're so, I shouldn't even be alive with this heart. I got this heart, but it's, it was damaged, ripped, torn, had holes in it, and came with a cancerous virus. <laughs> Gee, I, I mean, I, I don't want to be laughing. Why, you shouldn't sit too close she, to me. He, <laughs> <laughs> she should have her own comedy show. Oh, I would love it. You know what I keep telling people? Uh, the reason I've, I've died a few times, too, and my doctor came in one day and he goes, you're not dead yet? <laughs> no, that, that's I a said, good open. I said, well, I've been trying to get to heaven, but I keep missing. Goodness gracious. <laughs> you know? You're going to wait around for the rapture. Oh, well, you know, I'm, I don't know. I might be just kind of directing people that's for right. that. You said my husband's gracious disposition went unaffected by my bad attitude. So, oh. so you really had, you had a bad attitude in with doctors and with... It was difficult. It was the toss up between being that nice, loving, God just loves you Christian, but then also having to fight because sometimes doctors have to have a nine to five mentality. Well, you had an ER guy that oh. was really rude to you. I don't know what happened. I, I, I should have died that day. I really should have died. Tell some of the things he did. It's in the book. But well, yeah, I arrived in an ambulance. He said, you better tell me or I'm not going to give you any care. The ER wasn't busy. I arrived in an ambulance completely paralyzed, laying like this. They plot me on a table, close the triage door, and I'm laying there thinking, okay, I know I'm having a heart attack. I'm going to die. No one's going to, I have no way to get help. And he, ca he came in and out three times. He was in a bad mood. And he said, tell me what makes your chest pain worse. I said, I don't know. I could barely talk. Oh, pff, I'm not going to treat he someone said, like you. He said, if you're going to give me an answer like that, I'm out of here. And he yeah. leaves. It was 43 minutes per my records before he even put a heart monitor on me or oxygen. Can you believe that? And at the end of that whole ordeal, the heart transplant doctor came in because they didn't know what was happening. And my husband was being told they were just working on yeah. me. And he said, You tried get to get him here. in there, didn't you? I did. And the, and the guy said, I'll get him when I feel like it. And I could barely, I was like, I was like dying. And it ended up that my potassium was 8.5. So wow. high that it had shut all the muscles down in my body. My kidneys were in kidney failure. And the next thing to go is your heart. And when your heart stops from potassium, you're gone. No reviving you. It was by the grace of God, again, that I wasn't dead. He just kept going in and out. with, And, and I'm laying there paralyzed. <laughs> just, my goodness. Where does that come from? When did you get online 
or at least one of the ones that are wait for a, a heart. When did that happen? I was listed in, let me see, April's when I died a few times. <laughs> and then in May, May of 2005, I got listed. When, did, when you died, did you see a light? The second time I met the Lord. Oh, well, that's another book. That's in <laughs> book one. <laughs> So you can't keep up. I'm working on book three. Uh, I just need some time goodness. to write it. Okay. I need an island. Okay. <laughs> now, how did you, how did they find a heart for you? The morning of July, uh, let's see, 13th or the afternoon, I had been in the hospital. I had died three times officially, coded, and my surgeon, who is, we have the highest success rate in the country for surviving a heart transplant in little Spokane, Washington, because of one man, Timothy Eisenogle. The ice man, we like to call him. Oh, my goodness, yes. <laughs> he is icy. Yes. Strong Christian, but he came in, and he's blunt. I like that. I'm from New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, you need a heart today, or you're not going to make it maybe even a few days or a week. But there's 70 people on the list ahead of you. You're not getting one for nine months to a year. Get your wow. affairs in order and say goodbye is to your family. Is that what they tell you? Is it's, that what they tell you? I've heard you? it three times. Wow. And yeah, okay. when it's that imminent, they okay. have to. All right, take us from there now. How did you get the heart? The next morning, it was 6.30, nurses are coming in. I was a, I was a wall unit in that hospital. I had been <laughs> in every room multiple times. <laughs> oh and I've gone AWOL several times. I've escaped from the hospital. Those, yeah. are, those are really funny stories. Well, I can see you escaping. Oh, it was so much fun. Always have to do it during shift change. Yeah. They don't yeah. notice. Yeah. So they had me right by the nurse's station because okay. they couldn't trust me. And he um, came in and he said, puts a sheet of paper on the, on the desk and says, sign on the dotted line. And I looked at him and it said heart transplant, but I had to ask him. I said, how did you get a heart? And he told me about my donor. She was 28. She died tragically outside of Seattle. The heart was ripped, torn, damaged. She had a cancerous virus that was going to manifest in me. And he said, nobody wanted it. They took it off the list. They said, it won't keep anyone alive. And I looked at him and I said, why do you think that's going to work for me? And he said, this is the one the Lord has for you. Man, oh man. But I would only live a few years. And he said, the last six months will be a slow now, why were death. Now, why were you designated five years would be maximum? Well, between being a diabetic, as healthy as I was, I was not healthy anymore. Okay. And the heart being so damaged. And him, he had to, he had to get a Learjet. He had to borrow a Learjet. He had three hours to go from Spokane to Seattle, operate on Danielle, and sew this heart up, put aneuplasty rings in it, sew holes up, and bring it back and put it in me. And they said, there's this much of a chance it'll even start beating. Mm -hmm. But you know, they How got long was it. the operation? Uh, almost four hours, almost four hours. When they put her heart in me, now they're gonna have to shock it and massage yeah. it. It's been hardened and yeah. stunned with potassium. Soon as my blood started flowing, he said the entire operating room went quiet because it started beating, ba bum ba bum ba bum all by itself, all by itself. He just still talks about it. That's a God thing. Oh, mm -hmm. nobody can believe it. And so, you, yeah. so that's your heart today. You still have that's that. it, and it wow. was seven years, July 14th. And, and, and what is amazing, well, well, since we're on the heart, that you have, you you met the parents. Oh. Yes. Okay, t t tell us oh, about that. Two years after I had written, because about three months later, it is, you know, a privacy law. You cannot contact each other right. unless both people sign papers. Right. And I had signed him and written a letter. Uh, it was Danielle's mom that was the designated family contact. And it was uh, three days after New Year's. I, had gone, I was working for a ministry out in Idaho, and I was driving home and just feeling kind of, you know, melancholy. And I looked, and there was a message on my phone when I got home, and it was Danielle's mom. And she called me and said, you know, I made a New Year's resolution that I would call you, but for two years, this was her princess, Danielle and Charlotte. And she said, even though I know the Lord, because they're Christians, Danielle's in heaven waiting for me. Mm -hmm. She said, I, I went into a depression. I just wanted to die. I lost my princess. Mm -hmm. And we talked and cried for hours and hours, and Easter weekend, she flew to Spokane, and we met. In the airport. In the airport. And I got her a heart-shaped, um, a stethoscope with a heart-shaped red mic. Oh. And she got to put it on my chest. And she heard that heart. And listened to her daughter's heart beating in me, wow. Danielle. How special is and that? And this is Danielle here. Yeah, this is her. This is her heart. Okay. It's in me. 
and it, and and then I, I talk about yeah. in book two how I went to see the rest of the family, and they put on a neighborhood barbecue honoring me. Wow. Me? I mean, they lost <laughs> yeah. Danielle. Why and would you, they honor me? And and this girl has such problems in airports. No, <laughs> not oh. Not anymore this month now because of my pancreas donor. But I had so much equipment on me. I mean, you, you, and, and, you, oh. and these guys would, would oh. she says, I can't go through. I have a pacemaker. I can't go through there. That's going to mess it up. And the guy says, yes, you can. Go. No, I can't. So she has to opt out. And, and then this one guy was not going to let you out. No, see, I had the pacemaker. I had uh, an insulin pump. I had an alarm system hooked up to me with an IV because I had gone into shock and, and almost they, died. And, and they thought the thing you were carrying was a bomb. No. <laughs> no it, was, it, was a, it was, I know, and, and they would want to force me. Yeah. They're much better today because now it, it was yeah. a big news thing. But that one guy in Denver, it's 3.30 yeah. in the morning. I had been stuck overnight. I went home with a stranger yes. who ended up being a Christian, thank God, <laughs> and, and, he, and he's screaming at me. And I said, who made you a doctor? I, oh, I was, yeah. so when he got called off, I snuck past him. And they searched you. <laughs> well, yeah, then some lady patted me down and I just cried hysterical, yeah. walked away and thought, wow. how cruel, Yeah. how cruel. And I had medical documentation, but they would never want to look at it. Mm -hmm. And she goes to doctors and she would have Apparently, this was a day, as many as five to ten appointments. Oh, a week. A yeah. week. In fact, when I leave Florida next week, I'm staying. I'm going down and staying a week and working on a fiction book I've started. <laughs> I, I have five doctors. This appointments. is no fiction we're talking about, right? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> well, I've got to finish my third nonfiction, but yeah. now I want to do some fiction. I, I think I should be fiction. You have such a great attitude. It's the Lord, and it, I it thought is... it was John. <laughs> no, that poor man. He's probably hiding somewhere. <laughs> How many years have you been married? 30 years this past May 23rd, 30 wow. years. And he's got a good sense of humor, doesn't he? Uh, well, he tries, but he, you know, they say about how many words a woman has to talk and man has to talk. I read your little devotional for today and your little, yeah. it was interesting, your little devotional and your, your daily thing. Yeah. And I remember a, a teaching on marriage and the pastor said, my wife, she speaks 150 words a minute with gusts up to 180. <laughs> so that poor man doesn't get a word in edgewise. I'm, a, I'm an F5. <laughs> now, now, th th this is another strange thing. She gets on the airplane, and oh. th the pilot calls her up to the cockpit. <laughs> Because, and the flight attendant doesn't oh, like you at all. No, she didn't like the fact that I was not going to let go of my bag. I have a tag on it. Not anymore now since my pancreas yeah, transplant. Okay. I feel like but a you had a tag on it. Yeah. And it said, do not separate from this passenger. It, it was all my medical equipment. Yeah. My luggage goes. Yeah. I don't have my equipment. I could, be, I could die in a few yeah. days. If you yeah. separate this, it will detonate. <laughs> it will detonate. <laughs> yeah. well, well, they just always make such a big deal yeah. out of it, and they didn't believe me. Sure. So then she comes up to me. Uh, the, the, the captain would like to speak with you. So she has to go up to the cockpit. But of course I'm and, making and now, jokes. Now all of the passengers. Oh, they're getting nervous. They're getting, and, and oh, she's. because she's, of the black box. And she's making <laughs> comments to them. You're making, you're making. Oh, I had to make a joke out of it. She's I making mean, jokes you know. as she's passing them going up to the cockpit. Don't worry, people. It's fine. I'll take care of it. So up to the cockpit, what does he do to you? He says, um, you cannot have that equipment on this plane. I said, yes, I can. He said, no, you can't. I said, look at the tag. And he goes, well, I have to call this in. I said, be my guest, but you're going to delay this flight, and it's not my fault. So I go back to my seat, escorted by that stewardess, yeah. so it was not happy. And she's ticked. And I looked at everybody, and I said, don't worry, people. I took care of it. <laughs> <laughs> now, five Can't minutes. You just see her five, doing that? Yeah. five minutes goes by. Now we're late for takeoff. Yeah, sure. Now everybody's, they're not laughing. Yeah, yeah. They're pretty stoic yeah, looking. Yeah. And she comes back. The captain would like to speak to you again. Here she goes again. Here I go again. Now they're really getting nervous. Yeah. They're not just unhappy we're late. They're yeah. thinking, who are you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter what I look like. So now the captain apologizes. Apologizes. And he says, first class for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, those poor and other that passengers. So, she was not she happy. She was really ticked now oh. because, because she wanted her off the plane. I was right. And, and, I get and, first class. and she wanted to be right. Oh, that, that, and definitely. now she's being put in first, first class. class. It was such a short flight, though. All I got was a nice seat and a glass of ice water. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't win. I never get she to She gets this wide seat <laughs> so she can carry this bomb. Whatever. Yeah. 
I never get to fly first class. I finally do. It's a 45 minute flight and I get a glass of ice water. Okay, now I got to talk to you about the pancreas. Why did you need a pancreas? Oh, October 2010, the slow death that should have started years ago began. And the diabetes, as controlled as it was, my body said, with 34 pills a day, I take 34 pills a day. Oh my goodness. I have alarms to remember which times because they're timed. My body said, I've had it. Could no longer absorb any insulin. I had, to, the only thing left was to put me in a hospital on an IV till I died. And they said, you'll have three to six months to live. I said, really? I went to Mayo Clinic in Minneapolis. They did the first pancreas transplant there. That pancreas transplant was the only thing that would save my life. And they all said no. Everybody I contacted in the country, I even talked to a Dr. Dufran in Brussels because they were willing to work with me, but I'd have to go live there. And it was at two in the morning, hello, this is Dr. Dufran. And I'm like, oh my goodness. But you know, they, everybody said no. The final answer came now from Now do you have Mayo to wait Clinic. in line for a pancreas too, like a heart? You do. So February of 2011, I, I didn't care. They said, you're going to die in three to six months. I was, I was sick and ill. I could mm -hmm. barely get up every day. But I went on a, a little book tour down here in Florida, in Cape Coral, and uh, the Fort Myers area. I just do all of this myself. It's just me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, who's your agent? Me. Who's your publicist? Myself. Who's your uh, manager? I. And John's your husband. <laughs> Poor man, keep him out of it. <laughs> he doesn't want to be part of it. Don't but yeah, and I was down there and I was speaking also for Donate Life Today, which I do often, I'm an advocate, and they had a big event. And I met a gal, Paige, and I'll be going to see her this week in Cape Coral. And she said, oh, there's these crazy European doctors in Chicago. They gave me a pancreas transplant. They'll give you one, they're crazy. A French guy, an Italian, and a, and a Bulgarian. What a combo. Well, so I tried calling them. Well, whose who's pancreas is this? I mean, is it French or? <laughs> no, actually, it's, it's Jocelyn Roberts. And I was just up. Jocelyn? Jocelyn Roberts. Jocelyn. I received this pancreas a year ago on May 12, 2011, after living downtown Chicago, being chased by a homeless guy, being kicked out of a nursing home, and then some anonymous donor gave me a corporate apartment in the top of the presidential towers as long as I needed it. Boy, they John still don't takes care of you. He does, and they still won't let me. He doesn't want to know who, who, you know, no thank yous, just for as long as you need it. And on May 12th, I received a pancreas transplant. Where, where was it done? Chicago. I am the first and only person in the world. I did research on every transplant center to have a heart and six years later receive a pancreas, it's never been done. So these crazy three doctors in They're Chicago, crazy. when you went up there to talk to mm -hmm. them, they said they could do it. They put me through another four or five days of testing, and the one French guy, oh, I hope he's watching. Oh, you just don't understand why you're so fat, he said to me. It's because you just don't know what you put in that mouth of yours. Oh, I mean, I was, yeah. you know, and, and I looked at him and I said, oh. So when he finally signed the approval papers, I said, are you done? He says, yeah. And I said, you're one little snot-nosed European, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the nurses told me he wanted to get me mad. He wanted to push my buttons and see if I was a fighter because it was very slim chance I was going to make That's it. That's a great idea. Ah. Yeah, he didn't think I'd make, make well, it Well, you through. are a fighter. Oh. And they said to me, young lady, you'll be in intensive care 14 days. Don't even mess with us. We already got your number. On the fifth morning, they had to let me go. I mean, this is one of the most painful surgeries ever. They have to reconstruct your whole intestinal area. Yeah. I, did, I prayed for the Lord three things. My donor would be a Christian again. I'd have no need for pain medicine, and I'd be joyful. Has it happened? Jocelyn is a Christian. <gasps> I what did Tylenol only. They sent in the psychiatrist because I, I refused payment. This is the most painful surgery there is. You know what she said? Three things. Patient is happy to be off insulin. She's in a good mood. Still very hyper. <laughs> I would think that would be you good in ICU. Hyper? The fifth morning, they let me go. I was making people's beds. I walked the city of Chicago for a mile. It was amazing. You know. You know. <laughs> I mean, I, you 
are amazing. I, I don't have to that. exaggerate. Can, can somebody bring that lie detector in here? Yeah. I want to find Go out for if it. she really has had Go for a it. heart transplant, pancreas, and all this stuff. And, and you even have skin cancer. Oh, all over the place, yeah. Well, from the meds. And I'm you just thought developing. they were going to take your nose off oh. at one time. Oh, you know, it was so funny. I said, why can't I get it on my arm or my leg? It's always on my nose and my lips. But they did a good job. Can't tell. Oh, no, they I, took a big I, chunk off my nose. Because I, I, in the book, you were talking about that, and I was expecting, you know, part of your nose. Well, to be I do gone. fill it in with a lot of putty. Okay, <laughs> it's pretty good though. It looks great. And you know, I arrived here in Florida on Sunday. Yesterday, Sunday night actually, my pancreas donor was finally his. Her dad was finally brave enough to call me, and I got to find out who she is. Wow. Jocelyn Roberts. She was killed by a drunk driver trying to save her four-year-old cousin. They were in a crosswalk after the movies, going to go to McDonald's. A drunk driver barreled through the traffic that was stopped. You know how four-year-olds run ahead? They're always mm -hmm. faster than us. Cameron had run ahead. She saw that drunk driver coming. She would have been safe. And she ran to save her little cousin. And he hit both those children with her family watching. Oh, he hit them so hard, his bumper came off, and their bodies went flying, and he killed them both. Uh, and her how dad, she? 13, the most beautiful 13-year-old, sang in the choir, and a Christian. Oh and her family is community family. They, they live outside Dallas, Texas, and, and Denison, I believe. And how tragic. And, yeah. and I knew it was her. I just knew it was her, but I found out positively Sunday night and talked to her dad, Brian. Wow. And that man prayed for me. Oh, my goodness. They prayed for me on the phone so that all my new health problems would, wouldn't be overwhelming. Would you pray for somebody? That's your camera right there. Okay. Yes, I will. Right now. I will. Anybody that's out there that needs a healing, whether it's emotional or spiritual, physical, financial, child that has gone astray, a marriage that is broken or breaking, or you've just gotten a, a diagnosis of lupus, or you've been diagnosed with, with a cancer that you, you're feeling hopeless, know that God is in control. Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. Job 1.1, says Job, an upright and perfect servant of the Lord. So he was allowed to suffer because God knew he was upright and perfect. You are chosen by God to be his child. Mm -hmm. Take his healing in the way he gives it to you. One minute, pray for him. And, and Lord, I just pray now that all the people watching would trust you mm -hmm. and just know that you love them. Yes. Amen. 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 Isn't that wonderful? Amen. A miracle. Mm -hmm. oh. Prayed for you. <laughs> so accept, I have to. Isn't that wonderful? So accept your miracle. I have mm -hmm. to. Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful just to say those words? Say it with Jesus. me. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is the answer to every need he you may is. have. He is. Isn't that wonderful? He is. Lynn DeShazo, uh, more precious than silver, ancient words, all those beautiful songs yeah. we mm -hmm. sang and yeah. still sing. Uh, she uh, endorsed my book, and wow. I spoke with her, and she said, I don't know 10 people with even your issues. Get your copy. Bye-bye. You are invited to tune in each week to The Good Life, hosted by CTN founder and president Bob and Jane DeAndre. This program features inspirational and informative interviews, anointed music, and special reports. Don't miss The Good Life, Friday nights at 9 p.m. and Monday mornings at 3 a.m. Eastern Time, here on the Christian Television Network. God bless you, Yadid, and shalom, beloved ones. Join me as we go on a journey together, discovering how the writings of the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament connect. I'm going to leave my life. I'm going to leave my life for Yeshua. Please welcome 
our very special guest. You never know who's going to be on The Jim Baker Show. Only Join Jim and Lori Baker every day as they welcome anointed teachers. I was almost desperate to get back here. Creative innovators. Everything that comes through his mind is from God. And the most dynamic personalities from around the Christian world. You're an inspiration for people. This is an incredible place. How can a known poison that exists in our food supply or medication